All right, kids, let's talk about cursing. These curse words hold so much power in many languages, where the mere mention of many of these causes heads to turn, and TV shows to be cancelled, YouTube videos demonetized. Now while it is true that these words held a lot of power in history over time, it's highly likely that these all or nothing blanket statement words aren't always used as malicious as censors may make it out to be. How come I can't say? But at the very same time, if it got mad enough to describe exactly how I wish to extract your eyeballs with the hook side of a hammer in great detail, and there's no curse words in it, it wouldn't be censored. Well, these cartoons here today wish to challenge the notion, and have curse words be used as part of the story. And well, we're going to see which one did it better. Starting off with Sailor Mouth. We start off with a great song, and this is a neat sky. They went for this sunset look with the gradients they chose, and it honestly looks super nice. We actually have Spongebob not sad to leave work, but he has one job left. Take that pile of filth out with you. Oh, Mr. Krabs, you shouldn't talk about Squidward like that. No, 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 don't even say anything. You got your big nose face roasted. So Spongebob takes out the Squidward and throws it in a dumpster to then read the comments alongside it. I don't know if it's actually supposed to be commentary or my adult brain is connecting the dots where they shouldn't, but a lot of it sounds like environment issues, social issues, and the like when Spongebob reads them. But forget those, we have the goat. Krabs is a... Do you kiss your mother with that mouth? As you may or may not know, the episode revolves around bad words. Although here, they both censor it and don't show the word on camera. Plus, this was released much earlier than The Loud House, and it's had its fair share of controversy. Although, I would like to think an episode where children found out about curse words, see them used, and everyone appalled by it, including being explicitly told not to say them, seems like a better way to approach these words, rather than to just pretend they don't exist. Patrick comes along and calls these Enhancers. And he's not wrong. This is still the season where Patrick can be correct in many things and still slower than the rest of the pack. So rather than doing this a few times, possibly to themselves, nope, you gotta share those with everyone. Hey Patrick, how the are you? Pretty good, SpongeBob. This guy. I have seen him in so many reaction images. It never gets old. Man's just trying to eat his burger to hear someone dropping that profane language. That reaction will never get old. So thinking he can out top himself doing something he's never done before. He goes on the microphone, which I guess because cartoon they need. But why does this guy's hamburger plop to the ground and this guy's bite stay midair? Do you chew it and it loses its gravity? Does your saliva mix with the secret ingredient and we get this hovering concoction? Seriously, am I the only one who wants a hoverboard? People get uncomfortable, people walk out, which means less money being made, and what will happen? Well, we'll figure that out once we start Potty Mouth from the Loud House. Switching over to Potty Mouth, we start with a big emphasis on this academy that Lily may have a chance of joining. Read aloud, a mother of the Loud family wants to make the best impression she can so that Lily can be let in, and we get to the crux of what this episode is about. It's time for Operation Dessert Storm! <laughs> Did Lily just say the D word? Now usually I'd wait until the end to give away the big twist before an episode like this, my main issue wouldn't make sense unless you know exactly what's going on. She's saying donuts, but everyone around her thinks she's saying dang it. Now my issue isn't even the fact that they had to tone down the word to something that's okay to say on television, that's actually the smart move. The issue here is that upon finding out the twist, the allure of what this episode could be is gone. There is as much replay value from this episode as a firecracker you just lit. But on another note, I do appreciate the reference to Operation Desert Storm. It did not go over my head. We also get a montage from the Loud Sisters saying the D word. It's much funnier to think they shout demonetize. And we don't end up seeing Lucy and Luann's thing. And they spend this episode kind of away from everything. Part of me thinks it was for time reasons, but they foolishly end up reminiscing something that the audience didn't see. Now the rest of this episode is spent on learning this behavior that Lily has. So let's go on. in a one horse open sleigh. I try not to use this word a lot because it seems like no one really knows what this word should be used for, but this was cringeworthy. Not because of any realistic variables like very little people busting out Christmas songs after mashing their thumb, but because Lana wouldn't do this. It just felt like a joke brute force into her character and really just fell flat. Now on the other hand, both Lana and Lola get back at each other, making each other do their slip ups twice, and that was completely fine. In fact, let's talk about wet painters. Like this episode, that episode from SpongeBob revolves around a giant punchline
punchline at the end, but the jokes are funny. They aren't built off of being awkward, and the jokes were written to have everyone laugh at them. Despite the fact that I've seen this episode multiple times, and I know well enough that the duo have nothing to worry about, because Krabs is just messing with them, I always love to come back to that episode because it's just funny. It's funny because it does so many different things that you're bound to laugh at something. Potty Mouth seems to lack this, at least at first. Maybe it'll bring itself back on course, and we'll find out after we continue Sailor Mouth. So, for the 99% of you, you probably thought that less money means a happy Krabs. I mean, I don't know why you think that. Krabs has always been money hungry, there's multiple episodes to back that, but you know, they say not to argue with your fans. So I'm gonna let you have that opinion, that wrong opinion. I also do like how the entire episode isn't just this. I've noticed this in a lot of later episodes, but they find a thing, they do that thing for the entire episode, and then they get told the thing is wrong, or the thing breaks, or they have to save the city. There's only so much mileage a dolphin sound effect and reactions from the Bikini Bottomites are going to not just hit, but stick and be funny more times than once. And I do like how structure-wise, they get it out of the way so you can have something other than what happened throughout the Krusty Krab earlier. Well, what was it? What did he say? Uh, he said, um, uh, well, said. Damn it, I don't want to start. Huh? Damn it, I don't want to start. <gasps> SpongeBob and Friend! Front and center! <laughs> Why I gotta make the toy you paint the Krusty Krab for using such language? Oh, you guys are in trouble. But more importantly, it sets the tone that SpongeBob and Patrick cannot say these words, and much less get caught saying these words. This will be important later. There are 13 bad words you should never use. 13? That's a lot of bad words. That small detail was nice. They promise no more bad words. Which leads into them playing a neat game of shoots and ladders. Sorry, snakes and ladders. Wait, no. Wait, what? Oh, um, eels and escalators. Now, there is a problem with Finn this episode, a pretty big logical leap that the characters have to make, and it actually involves this scene here, but we'll get to it. SpongeBob gets the eels, which is bad, and it makes him mad. Patrick gets the escalators, which makes him happy. Apparently, there's an eel you can get where you lose, but there's also a finish line. Don't ask me how it's played. Classified cartoon reviewer law. But here's the confusing part. Eels. Ah! <laughs> you said number 11. Okay, so we are to believe that SpongeBob doesn't know what bad words are up until this episode. The only context he was given was that it's sentence enhancers. You put these words in front of sentences to make them sound better. So the logical leap here is that he would go to shout a curse word here? How? He doesn't know what the word is or how it's commonly used, so we have to assume that somewhere along the line, SpongeBob's knowledge on profanity skyrocketed. Or, and this is the only good explanation I can get, he somehow associated crab saying bad words Word, with maybe a word he heard and he used it in that way. Besides that, there's really no way for him to know how to use a word like that. He's only heard that one word, so it doesn't make much sense. But also, I don't care. It doesn't hurt the episode. So Patrick out SpongeBob like a best friend would, and we'll get back to that once we continue Potty Mouth. Getting back to Potty Mouth, it is Lisa's turn, and it isn't until this point in which I find one of the few redeeming qualities about this episode, Lily. She's such a blank canvas. And that makes her possibly one of the most special of the Loud family. In many episodes, she seems to absorb the qualities of those around her, and it makes her feel like she may become the most diverse of them all, considering that she's surrounded by people who are wildly talented at different areas. Not only that, but her sense of pure happiness and joy really comes out here as she dances with Lisa. We need more dancing babies, Nickelodeon. Oh, and also, Lisa wears a wig and has an extra toe, if you wanted to know that. We then go over to Lori and Lenny, who pretend to rip a sweater and ends up stretching the sweater, which they actually like. I guess because they're fashionable, they didn't have any old clothes to do this with. One stretching it, Lori legit gets upset, but they share it. Now of these, both Lisa and Lori's made sense within the story. I'd like to imagine a daycare wouldn't accept an insane, angry suppressor that mumbles half-remembered Christmas songs. Now Lincoln has the best test of them all, because Lily sneezes into his shirt. And how does he respond? 
the snow in a one-horse open sleigh. The fatal flaw of repeating jokes is that if it isn't funny the first time, each time after, the fail just gets more and more pathetic, and the joke didn't really start off on the best foot. I think you get it from here. I want some coffee or some hot chocolate, so let's just get through this. Lynn and Luna do pretty much the exact same thing, get the exact same results. And I think the main issue here is that it's actually telling a story rather than jokes, and because of this, the replay value is so low. Maybe that's why after the first viewing, I don't want to see it again. What jokes am I coming back to? Here's another example of why the Christmas joke pales in comparison. So let's set the scene. The loud parents set up everything for the interview, including lots of sweets on the coffee table. Lily wants a donut, but she can't have one. So she screams donut, and they think it's dang it. Perfectly fine stuff, but watch this. It didn't work! She's still saying it! Now we do this my way. Dr. Shuttleworth, uh, this is our youngest, Lily. See, I didn't expect Lynn to just swing the tongs away with the baseball bat. It fell out of place and that's what gets me. It also doesn't help that I know Loud House has a very strict structure and it's six of that and because of that and it being the number one Nick show, it plays really safe. These really basic jokes make the Loud House in more than many of the episodes. And I believe I talked about three so far, Undie Pressure, Elle is for Love, and One of the Boys. And of these, believe it or not, none of them really compel me. You can even make the argument that considering the Loud House is an American show, even Ellis for Love is safe. Sure, there's many areas of the world where even Clyde's dads are censored, but you'd have to admit, now is a great time to make that episode. So because of this, jokes like what Lynn does just seem out of place because of how not to the script they are. But let's finish up Sailor Mouth before finishing up Potty Mouth. So let's finish this. They end up having a simple but fun chase. They use a CGI rotating ground, which was a neat touch. Patrick turning with the ice cream truck is always classic. They come out being the filthy mouth heathens that they always were. Patrick imagines half of the people on Instagram, and Krabs determines a punishment after pushing it in their head that curse words are a big no-no. You're gonna give the crusty crab a fresh coat of paint from top to bottom. Whoa! Oh, oh my foot up in a boatload of uh, 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 grabbing. Wait, you have an irregular finger count? Huh, that's an odd thing that this episode shares. But they go and do something even worse than painting the Krusty Krab, which looks fine. They flip the table on crabs and go to tell his mom. So if his mom ever curses, what happens then? Who's the higher authority? I do love how, with a little perspective change, Krabs is now on the level of SpongeBob, not talking down to him, not having authority, but playing by the rules set by Krabs. Little does he know that curse words are weird and some people can use it, and others can't. So rather than saying Krabs use curse words, they basically say all the curse words that they said before. Krabs' mother faints, and this small gesture of taking a nickel from your mom just, wow, moving on. We really need more Krabs in his mom episodes, let's be honest. Okay, fine, moving on now. They all work on Krabs' mother's house, which, gotta give a thumbs up for, don't pay with money, pay with work, because I'm definitely not painting that house. And this episode ends as so. Yeah! Mate! <laughs> What? It's old man Jenkins in his jalopy. <laughs> Howdy, Mrs. K! That's not the old man Jenkins I know. Also, you were saying a few words under your mouth when the horn went on, but I, you know, I get it. You wouldn't want to paint your house. Also, I like how you can actually see the paint on the house, as if someone kind of just blindly pushed a paintbrush in different areas, but anyway, this was Sailor Mouth. Finishing up Potty Mouth, the rest of this episode revolves around having Lily make the best first impression so that she can join this daycare. Now, of course, all she had to do is be herself and let honesty pave the way and... <sighs> I think The Loud House may be the only show pushing morals as strong at the end of every episode that doesn't air on a junior block. So let's just move on. Their plan is to replace Lily with Lisa, and I also gotta say that the way Lisa's eyes get very small on her chrome dome, and her expression that she's so done with life, it, it just has to be the funniest thing I've ever seen on this show. And I just saw someone swing tongs with a baseball bat. She wasn't comfortable doing this, but she had to. Now another thing, and this wasn't the only show to do this, Dexter's Lab, for example, had done this way too too often. Lisa, while being very smart and knowing how a baby would act, is also too arrogant to act like a baby. I mean, you would think she'd have the foresight, not a glasses pun, to know that Lily being in this daycare is extremely beneficial to her growth. So tired of being degraded and seen as inferior, you know, because it's a genius 
cliche to be super arrogant about your own intellectual skill, she poops herself. Knowing the exact context of what Luna meant as acting as a one year old, meaning to do it in a way that makes Lily look good. Despite all the obstacles that came in Lily's way, of course she's accepted. Did she just say the D word? Children, Lily didn't say the D word. I believe she just wanted a donut. See? Dang it! Dang it! It's do not, sweetie. Donut. On first viewing, I found this to be okay. It's a pretty straightforward story, not their best episode. More of that safeness I was talking about that Loud House clings to, for justifiable reasons, mind you. Now, of course, as much as I enjoy a good story and uh, okay jokes, even episodes that push the mark, look, I think there should be room for shows that are safe. Shows that explicitly and in a dedicated effort only target kids. So yes, to me, it's bland because I've seen this before multiple times. Which means that maybe, if I was growing up around this time, I would have liked this. The only issue that still remains is that I just can't see myself rewatching these episodes the way I do with Spongebob, young or older. It doesn't have those nuances that the writers that made the first three seasons went through a lot of effort to do. It ends with Lily actually cursing when the donut she pushed for all throughout this episode is taken by the dog, and that was Potty Mouth. I think it's pretty obvious. I'm going with Sailor Mouth. Potty Mouth was just a little too safe, a little too bland, a little too dull, boring, but I understand. It was meant to tell a pretty simple story, and that's it. But I'd like to know what you guys would have picked. Let me know in the comments down below, and follow me on Instagram and Twitter, The Alpha J Show. Let me know if you follow me based off of this video, I'd love to know. And also, let me know in the comments down below what you would like me to cover in the next verses. Special thanks to the patrons of February, and until next time, take care. Alpha out.